See if you can recognize the difference between these two ways of walking. It's important to understand the way you walk because it can mean the difference between having joints that are hurting a lot or joints that are pain-free. If you're new to the channel, I'm Dr. Todd Martin, creator of The Walking Code. In this video, I'm gonna look at that specific walk that I showed, the dysfunctional one, and I'm gonna point out some of the errors that are going on and then show you how you can correct it and get a better aligned walk with lower impact. Let's go ahead and get started. Now I'm gonna break down the abnormal walking style for you and show you some visual cues that are gonna help you recognize it then I'm gonna show you how you're gonna be able to engage your core better to transition yourself from that walking style, which I would describe as kind of a floppy walk, not quite a shuffle, but more of a flopping gait, and transition from that to a more healthy walking style that's gonna be better for your spinal alignment and your other joints. So first, let's look at how wide the base is of the gate. In the flopping style, the base of the gate is fairly wide, which means we're not transferring the spine from one leg to the other leg between steps. If we're gonna step with proper alignment, and I'm just gonna walk in place here, you want your spine to transfer over the standing leg, and then after you place your other foot, your spine is gonna transfer back over the other standing leg. And it's a dynamic motion that keeps your center of mass directly over the foot. That helps keep your foot better aligned, and it helps keep your knee, hip, and back aligned. If we walk in this sort of manner, where the spine never transfers over the standing leg, as I put my full weight on the foot, the weight is gonna be over the inside of the foot, the inside of the knee, and the inside of the hip. And that, after thousands of steps a day for 365 days a year, that sort of stress is going to wear out the soft tissues, the ligaments, the tendons, and the joints, leading to chronic pain and arthritis. When we walk correctly, we transfer the weight over the standing leg with each step, keeping everything better aligned. The next thing I'm gonna point out is the alignment of the pelvis, or lack of alignment of the pelvis. When we're doing the flopping gait, what's happening is the lower abs are not really engaged. So the pelvis, instead of being in a neutral position, is tipped forward, or an anterior pelvic tilt. Now, if I just do that in isolation and tilt my pelvis forward, it starts to create a backwards movement causing me to fall back. And so the compensation is a slight forward lean from the upper part of the waist. And for people who are young enough to try to keep their eyes forward, they end up tilting the head up to keep the eyes gazing in the right direction, but it's not really a vertical posture. So it looks like this. It might be subtle and hard to see, but the alignment of the spine is not there. And with each step, we're having a lot of impact forces onto the lower back because the lower back is not aligned with the pelvis. It also is gonna cause a lot of stress on the neck because the neck is in this forward head posture because the torso is forward to keep the center of balance. And so I have to keep my head up this way, but it's not aligned with the spine. When we walk normally, we need to engage the lower abs to keep the pelvis in the neutral position. That allows us not to lean forward from the upper part of the waist, and it allows our neck to be vertically aligned with the rest of the spine and for the eyes to be gazing forward. Now, it doesn't mean you can't glance down with your eyeballs when you're walking, particularly in a 
environment like this where there's a lot of rocks. But if you're looking down like this as you walk, that sort of forward head posture is really not good for alignment and not good for the health of your neck or your other joints. Now I'm going to show you a bit of a core exercise here that is going to help you with that neutralizing of the pelvis. It's going to occur after you place the heel on the ground. After the heel touches, we don't want to just fall into it. We need to engage the lower abs on the side where the heel just touched. We're not going to engage the lower abs on both sides at the same time. They only engage on the side where the weight is going to be distributed. So as I touch down with the heel, I'm going to engage the lower abs on the left to tuck the pelvis under. And so it looks like the pelvis is just moving forward like this, but that's a dynamic action. If I just move forward without the lower abs, that's what happens. Gravity just takes the upper part of the body and moves it like that. So as I'm moving forward, the lower abs engage to tuck under. And as I take the next step, the lower abs on the other side are going to tuck under to keep the body vertical instead of like this. Not only is that going to help with the alignment of the pelvis, that's also one of the actions that's going to get your spine aligned over the standing leg. So we're going to get rid of that wide based gait by activating the lower abs. The lower abs on my left side are going to tuck the pelvis under and also rotate back and to the left. That pulls my spine into alignment with the left leg. And then when I place my right foot, I'm going to engage my lower abs on the right, and that's going to pull my body into alignment with the right leg. And so now I have good alignment of the spine, and the weight distribution is perfectly centered over the joints. That's going to keep them happy and healthy. The next thing I'm going to point out is the hand and shoulder position. If we go back and watch the video of me walking with the flopping gait, you're going to see that the hands are faced like this. If I walk from behind, it might be more visible. The palms are facing backward. Instead of the palms facing the side of the thighs, when we walk normal, the thumbs should be facing directly forward in the direction that I'm moving. They should not be facing across the body. This is a core movement. It's not created by the shoulder muscles. When we are not using the lower abs correctly, what happens is the shoulders are going to be rolled inward. And that is going to grind your rotator cuff up underneath the shoulder bone and with the thousands of steps a day, end up causing wear and tear on that rotator cuff, making you more likely to get rotator cuff impingement and tendonitis. So when you're walking without transferring weight properly, we need to engage the whole core to make it happen correctly. So as I place the foot, as I engage the lower abs, transferring the weight, you can see the effect on the shoulder. It rolls my shoulder out so my thumbs are now facing forward before I do the swing through of the step. And so that keeps my shoulders in the proper position so I'm not getting that grinding of the rotator cuff. And you can go to the physical therapist and do all of the external rotation strengthening band exercises you want, but if you walk with the flopping gait, your shoulder is still going to be internally rotated. It has nothing to do with the strength in the shoulder. It has everything to do with the alignment of the core as you're walking. Now you're going to see that with the flopping gait that I just did, but you're also going to see that with the duck footed gait. When people walk with duck feet, which is probably the most common problem, you're always going to see the palms facing backwards like this, which means the shoulders are internally rotated.
Now, for the last part of this analysis, I wanna talk about the power, the hip power that we use when we're taking a step. With the flopping gait, what's happening is all of the power is coming from swinging the swing leg forward. So I'm throwing the swing leg forward by flexing the hip. From the side view, we already have our posture problem and we're just taking the step by swinging the swing leg forward and then I swing the other swing leg forward and it just flops from foot to foot. There's no real weight transfer. And that's because we don't have the lower abs engaged. When we engage the lower abs, as I've already described, and we tuck under, now we have an aligned pelvis. If I try to just throw my swing leg forward with proper alignment, this is what happens. It doesn't go anywhere. I can't actually move the body forward with the swing leg with proper alignment. When we are standing with this proper alignment, we need to drive the power off of the standing leg hip. So I'm gonna use my left leg hip to power the swing through. And the swing through of the right leg is going to be passive. All the power is coming from my left hip. Then I place, shift the weight, and then now I power from the right hip. The swing leg appears to be flexing forward, but really what is going on that's causing the majority of that swing through is the rotation of the pelvis. Because my pelvis is being rotated by the lower abs. Look at it this way. My lower abs on the left are turning the pelvis around in a counterclockwise direction. And so what results from that is the leg is being brought around by the rotation of the pelvis, not so much by me swinging the leg forward with the hip. Rotating pelvis, and then the upper abs are moving in a counter direction to the lower abs, keeping the body straight. So the power of that swing through is being generated from the core from the lower ab action, and then the power from the hip flexors on the side of the standing leg that work in conjunction with the lower abs to create this swing through right here, which should end with the foot just hovering off the ground. The heel of the rear foot should still be on the ground until we begin the next step by rotating the upper body in the opposite direction. So left side forward at the end of the swing through, and then I begin to bring the right side of the upper waist forward to bring the heel down. Then I activate the lower abs, and then I activate the hip for the swing through. And then again, I'm gonna activate the upper abs, and as I bring the heel down, if you're doing it fluidly and properly, the rear heel should come up as you do that. So the rear heel comes up as the forward heel is coming down. That is gonna be part of what that toe off is. You might hear a lot of videos talking about how we should push off with the toes. I wouldn't think about it that way. What's gonna happen is your ankle is going to naturally plantar flex if you're walking correctly, and it's gonna plantar flex because of the motion of the core. And as soon as your forward heel hits the ground, that's when the plantar flexion ends because now my ankle needs to start to pull up or dorsiflex to clear the ground. So we don't wanna be walking trying to, as many people describe, push off of the toe as if we're trying to skateboard and the toe is gonna to be pushing that way because then you're gonna to start to trip as you try to drag or bring your foot forward. The active plantar flexion of the ankle 
ends as soon as the heel hits the ground. Now it's all forward movement or dorsiflexion of the rear ankle, which is going to allow it to have good clearance from the ground and help you avoid tripping. So I hope this video has been helpful. We've talked about the engagement of the lower abs to keep the pelvis in a neutral position and transfer the weight so you're not in this wide-based gait. We've talked about how that ab action is going to align your arm so your thumb is facing forward, which is really important for the health of your shoulder. And then we talked about how to power using the hip from the standing leg in conjunction with the lower abs to bring the pelvis around and power the swing through. And that's going to allow you to place the heel softly. So even if you're walking barefoot, that heel contact is not going to be painful. So if you practice these tips that I've just shared with you, regardless of the walking technique issue you may have, it's going to help you. You may not have the flopping feet that I really focused on here. You might have duck feet, or you might have the forward lean with a heavy heel strike. Any of these problems are going to be helped out by using the techniques that I just described that are gonna help you walk more fluidly, walk with more confidence, and walk with lower impact on your joints. Have a great day.